year. Um, my tenure has been across multiple different schools, Peabrook, Benoa, Southmore High, and a few years at beautiful Burden Park State School uh, with lovely Winnie and her family here. <coughs> I'm very privileged to have led uh, schools on the Gold Coast region. I feel very passionate about our area and the nuances that our families and our children bring to us. We aren't a big school. We don't want to be. I have led schools of 2,200 students, and let me tell you, that's a big machine. Right? It's been the same in an even bigger school. Um, we like to know you. We like to know our students. We like to give you the opportunity for your young people to flourish and to have a wonderful experience where they're not a number, where they are known, and where you are known to us and vice versa, where you can communicate to us. That said, uh, last year I closed the borders to our school, which meant that traditionally Mary Mac would have taken quite a few students out of catchment. We don't do that anymore. The only way to come into our school is via our summit program or be an in-catchment student. Now many schools work like that. Uh, we're very strict in that space because we like to keep our school the way that it is. It's got a beautiful feel, I'm sure that you appreciate our grounds, are really lovely. Um, it's a small and intimate kind of high school. Um, when we have big, our neighbours are at 1,800, 2,200, I think PBC is at 3,500 now. That is a lot of people to take care of. Um, I like this feel. I like family feel. Um, I sent my own student to a public high school. I believe passionately in public education. I think that we have some of the best staff and the best outcomes that we can provide our young people. So that's my promise to you as a principal here. Um, and I'll introduce my team as we go through. But sharing tonight's information session with me mostly is Rachel Beery, Deputy Principal. To her right is our Head of Inclusion, Sarah DeCamp. Um, representing our STEAM faculty is Jada Turish. And Cara McLennan is joining us for the arts. Up the back, Mr. Chris Eisenberg from Sport, you'll hear from him. And lovely Miss Ellie Johnston. I'm sporting a new haircut who I didn't recognise. Uh, our guidance officer is also being toured by Barbie Lee today. And I did see uh, Amber White also as our tour and our head of senior schooling. So we have quite a few staff coming here tonight. Um, we don't have many students here and we don't have all of the whiz bang things. Uh, we're not here to sell to you tonight. Our role is to show you our school, show you our facilities, meet the key staff, and allow you any questions that you might have around enrolment because we've done all of the big showy stuff earlier this term. Now it's just really about getting to know you, getting to know us, and if you have any questions before you make what I think is one of the biggest decisions for your young person's lives. Next to buying your house, the next best decision that you make really is about the education of your child. And you need to take it seriously. And I think I was having a conversation with my family not too long ago where we were saying, it's not uncommon for families to have one student in a private school and one student in a public school, or one student in that public school and another student in that public school, because we all do things differently. Every school on the Gold Coast is fantastic. I think Mary Mac is exceptional. But we all offer different things. So tonight, we're gonna to tell you the kinds of things that we offer you here, and then you can go away and make the decision. Maybe we aren't the best fit for you. Maybe you're not the best fit for us. Maybe the school down the road has a much better program for your particular student that you're interested in. By all means, go and have a look at those programs. The thing that I can guarantee you here is that we're not going to pretend to be something that we're not. We deeply are passionate about our academics. We're huge in STEAM. We have an amazing emerging arts program. We care about our kids. We're a small school. We want communication with you. We want to take care of you. But I do not want to be a big school. I could open our borders and I could have 13, 1,500 tomorrow. I don't want that. My commitment is to you guys and to make sure that your young person has a beautiful experience with us over the next couple of years. So, the kinds of things that you need to know from us today. <coughs> um, many of our students would know that whenever we do um, a fairly important gathering of people, we talk about a, an, an acknowledgement of country. country. <coughs> and so tonight I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this particular land. Um, this site is actually very important to our Indigenous Elders who are the Kumbamiri people of the Yugambeh speaking language. These are our three values in primary school. Many of you have values as well. Winnie, what are your values at your primary school? Being safe, being respectful, being considerate and being loving. Yeah. Many of you would have very similar uh, values like this. I think Broad Beach had very similar ones. The one that probably some of you don't have is that notion of reliability. 
Um, we believe in, in teaching our young people to be reliable. Um, if any of you have a teenager in your house, you know that that is a challenge. Um, but getting our kids to be ready, reliable, getting them ready on time, working, independent, autonomous young people is a part of the job that we take quite seriously. So it may seem like an interesting value, it's actually really critical to who we are and what we do. <clears throat> we are a more traditional school. We believe in uniform. We believe in behaviour and policies. We believe in attendance. We want our students to walk out those gates and look immaculate. Many of you who have had senior students go through here will see that there has been a considerable change in uniform. Last year we did not have a, a formal junior uniform, we do now. Last year we had sort of um, jackets that I don't think went well with a, a non-formal uniform, so now we have a much smarter woolen beautiful jumper. Our students are transitioning into being, for next year we will have four year levels and the new formal uniform and by the end of 2025 we will have a full transition into our uniform. Students need a place where they feel valued and where they belong. They need to walk out and have the rest of the community go, ah, oh, yes, you're an exceptional Mary Mac student. That's what I want. I don't take my badge off when I go to Coles, when I go shopping, or I have to get out and pay petrol. I'm a very proud principal. I want people to know where I go. And if people say, hey, there's a couple of things about your students that I want you to know, I want to be able to hear about that. Because it's my job to make sure that we're representing our community very well. The upside of that is that if you're a business owner, you're more likely to hire one of our students here. You're more likely to give them an opportunity in a certificate program or give them a step up or become a mentor. So it works both ways. <clears throat> we have high expectations. We do not make apologies for that. We set a standard and we expect our students to follow them. <coughs> allow them the privilege of being young adults who make up their mind about a lot of things. One of those things is the ability to select their subjects when they first come to high school. In other schools, students will be forced into subjects for tasters. We think our students are mature enough to be able to tell us what they actually quite enjoy and what they're actually quite good at. So it's a point of difference for us than other, and then many other schools. <coughs> We can tell also behaviourally incidents where students aren't engaged in a subject that they really dislike. Why do I want to do that subject? It's got nothing to do with me and I'm forced to do that subject. Um, we can tell that the behavioural incidences in those classes where students don't enjoy being in there are going to go up. Students are silly. They're young people, they know what they want, they know what they enjoy. So they have the freedom to be able to do that and we've refined our curriculum in a way that we still meet the national curriculum standards. We also run several intervention programs. Um, over the course of Wednesday, two periods a week, students will be involved in what we call a response to intervention program to help with literacy and numeracy. And they'll also be involved in what we call our Triple M program, our Mary Mac Minds Matter program, and that's for our wellbeing focus as well. We know that mental health and student support services are a really critical part of a young adolescent's life, and so those courses are actually very important. They're not marked, they're more experiential kind of uh, courses that our students participate in with teachers. So they're much more casual, they don't have a, um, an assessment element at the end. It's just an experience opportunity for our young people. And it also builds relationships with staff that they may not come in contact otherwise. And so that's really important for our young people to have a, a base contact so that they feel comfortable they can go and talk to a variety of different people if they need. <coughs> These are some of the things that we think about when we work with you as a team. Communication and partnership with you as a parent is really important to us. We don't know what's happening in your house. We would like to know if it's going to impact on your young person. So there's a variety of different people um, in our school. And I think I heard Ellie taking on her tour. She was talking about um, our external services that come into the school and support us, such as our, our school psychologist, who's here four times a week our general practitioner who's here and available for you and your student that both fills. We have guidance officers, student support services workers, uh, we have social workers. Everybody that your student may need, they can come in contact with that larger group of that team. <coughs> our key three drivers for the next few years in our school are this. It's our intervention, so supporting literacy and numeracy at all scales, 
extending our top end students, supporting our middle end students to get to the next stage up, and supporting our lower achievers to experience success, whatever that may look like for them. The middle one is professional learning and educational leadership. I believe that if I can put the best educators in front of your children, your children are going to reap the results. Pretty simple. We are not a group of people who do not believe in professional development and learning. We're in the business of education, so we should be educating ourselves constantly. And the last one up there is about our curriculum expertise. We are bound by certain areas of our curriculum and mandates that we must present, and we do, but we are very crafty and clever in the ways that we can best fit them into a program that is more tailored to our young people. I'm sorry, that little board there that you can't see um, tells you some of the data. So at the end of your student success story, you don't want them to just graduate with a little certificate piece of paper. When you were back in school, when I was back in school, your senior certificate, for example, we don't call it that anymore kind of the same. Um, and tomorrow night, if you have senior students or students in year nine, we're actually doing a presentation for all of our families. And if you're keen to just find out more about what that senior program looks <coughs> like, you're very welcome to join us, six o'clock in the hall tomorrow night. Um, but basically that just tells you that <clears throat> out of 144 of our students, every single one of them that wanted to go to university did. Every single one of them graduated with the senior certificate. Every single one of them. No one was left behind. So that's an incredible achievement from our team and from young people. It's not easy to get your senior certificate these days. It's really not. So we're really proud of that data and proud of our seniors. Just an example of our uniforms. Note the shoes. Note the shoes. Note the shoes. <laughs> Please note the shoes. Uh, if you're going to have a fight with a young person about needing to belong for Nikes that nearly put a stop to everybody. Everybody has his Nikes on hand. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Have you shares in that at the beginning of the year? Yeah. If that is what your young person wants to wear, no problem. Put an order in now because come January, your student will be not wearing thongs when they come to school um, just because your Nike Air Forces haven't come in. So we'll facilitate them with a beautiful brand new pair from BW. And it's strange how quickly those shoes come in. So please think ahead. Um, I was one of the Williams mums where you get the two for one and I'd buy a size whatever and then the next size up. Ingenious, I thought, until my son hit size 11. Um, and then that all went pear shaped. This is our commitment to you. We build networks, we build partnerships, we build community and businesses. This is what we want from you. We're very selective about who comes into our school and very welcoming of the people who are in our catchment. <coughs> we want to work with you because we want to work in a community that wants the best for their students. I am very privileged to get lots of information because what another principal for a big high school actually lives just down the road from our school here and he always comments on things that are great or not great um, and he gives me the inside scoop. Well, I really appreciate that as a principal and a community member. I want to know because I want to be able to help our students do better every day. And he was saying thank you for improving uh, my real estate value recently. So that's really nice if you're looking to invest Mary Mac is the place to be. I'm going to introduce one of uh, my powerful team, Rachel Deere for the Deputy Principal. She's going to give you some more of the ins and outs, and then we'll briefly make contact with all of our heads of department for our summit programs, that I'm sure that you're keen. And then afterwards, if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask them, or you can email them if you don't have time tonight. That's fine, we'll stick around and have a chat to you. Hi, everyone. It's amazing to see so many people here tonight. I'll try and be quick. Um, so people at the back won't be able to see this, um, but it's basically what does our secondary, junior secondary performance team look like? So who, who's here to help your students? Um, so obviously you've met Rachel the principal, then you've got the deputy principals, um, deputy principal of inclusion. Um, we've got a dean per year level, um, which once you hit a high school, that's very different, where in primary school, you always will go to a deputy or principal when there's an issue um, or there's a concern with your students. Um, we have an added layering in a high school um, because we have so many students per year level. So we have got a dean per year level whose sole job is to support your students' mental health, well-being, and academics um, within a school. Um, so I think that that's a really important part of it. Um, as um, Ellie may have told some of you, we have a guidance officer, we have a school-based health nurse, um, the general practitioner, the psychologist, and we'll have a chaplain. Um, that comes in as well. Then we also have 
our amazing horde of junior, um, Dana Woods, who you've all met. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we also have, I don't think Andy's here, but we have our hod of student support and engagement. So he, he works with our, deans of, uh, our dean of students and helps support students in our positive behaviour for learning. Then under that, we have the curriculum hods who run the curriculum in our classrooms. So lots of people above teachers that will help support your students find success at Merrimack. Um, we have a vision for our junior secondary students. Um, so we'd like to be developing learners who can identify opportunity and manage risk, who can innovate and create, who can shape and define their future. As we said, this is why we let our students coming into Year 7 pick some of their electives. Um, so that we can create those students. Um, as Rachel said, we have high expectations. Um, that's not a bad thing. Um, high expectation sets the standard for students. Um, which is a really important thing. Habits of the 21st century and the six global competencies are looked at and dealt with. Learning is personalised per student. Um, so if we have students that are struggling, we look at what support we're putting in place for those students. If we have students that are excelling, we look at what we can do to, in, to further improve the work that they're doing in their higher order thinking. Um, there's one area that is just a little bit different <coughs> from last this year is that um, sometimes schools don't do a good job of looking at those. They just sort of sit in the middle. You know, they're not amazing, but they're, they're okay. Um, and so what we found is uh, we really need to cater to that. So when you're applying, if you choose to apply for a summer excellence program and your student may not be operating at the very highest level, but we see potential in them, we will enrol them into what we call our high potential class. This is very limited amount. But it's for those particular students that we think, you know, we think that there's a lot more here. Sometimes they're blitzing it in NAPLAN, but maybe they're getting a C in the classroom or other way around. So the high potential class is the one that we are really setting up for success and pushing hard those particular students that we feel have the potential to launch into a much higher academic space. So it's just a little bit different. Um, we haven't run that before. I think we have taken from the academic excellence students who were unsuccessful in the first round, I think we already have 12 of those students who we think not quite academic excellent, but definitely high potential and we have enrolled them in our school through that program. Um, our high school opportunities here, we have the teaching teams that deliver the eight um, KLAs or key learning areas. As I've said, we've got the deans, an amazing amount of support for staff and students within the school. We have our specialist teaching areas, which is why we have our HOD and one of our amazing STEAM teachers here to talk to you. Um, there's a leadership focus and challenge um, for our students. We are a bring your own device school, um, which on your enrolment you'll be getting all of that information on what that looks like. Um, we have some amazing partnerships, and as Rachel said, what we're always looking for to develop other partnerships with um, relevant people. Our seniors can get out, get VET certification, they do work placement, we have pathway talks with them. Um, we are part of a sporting group where we have six days where the students are playing sport against other schools, um, which is amazing and great fun and the kids are loving that. Um, music is amazing here. The other day we had our band playing in the lunchtime out near the tuck shop, which was just amazing. Our school band, not our school band, it's our school rock band, I'd call it. Year 11's just going to do yeah. Year 11s just wanted to come out and play some music and get an audience, so it was amazing. Um, and we have some amazing camps that, that happen for all students as well. We do extension, intervention and support. So as Rachel's already talked you through our intervention, our response to intervention, our RCI program, um, we also have software that students can use at home. We have digital learning, so we use the platform called QLearn here for our students. Um, we have the arts and we do free choices of languages um, within the junior school. As I said, the inter-school sport days and leadership opportunities right from grade seven. Here are just some visuals of how we are supporting our students. Um, yeah, so that was our inclusion students last year went to a, an STEM fest and
and they won first place, um, which was really amazing work. They created their own props, um, their own program, and they did their performances um, in front of large crowds, which was amazing for our students. Um, you probably can't read the other side, which is our three levels of differentiation and intervention. Um, we can go through that um, in further detail when you get the paper the form for that. Um, this is our student services page, so we've already talked through all of the amazing people that work in that space, but I'll jump back to that. <laughs> so we talked a little bit about making some changes around the kind of programs that we run here. Uh, traditionally, if you were academic excellence, many of our students were sort of maths and science and moved into the STEAM phase. <clears throat> but we know that many of our students are particularly super creative, talented arts students, and so Mary Beth are really missing out on a large chunk of our academically capable students. So, our academic program is for students who are high achieving in English, maths, science, and history. So those four are what we take into consideration. We also then allow students to be excellent in a variety of other subject areas, which is not a freedom that many high schools allow. Because we already know our students can be excellent, multiple excellent. That's a phrase. <laughs> Multiply excellent. They're really good at lots of different stuff. Um, so we do these core subjects here, math, science, English, history, and geography. This is for everybody. Um, and then we have a multitude of different elective subjects that students can do. <clears throat> you can still do STEAM and not be a part of the STEAM Excellence Program. Why? Because you should be able to. You should be able to have access to that kind of level of technology. You can still do dance and not be a dance excellence student. Because if you want to try dance and you've never done it before, why shouldn't you be able to have that experience? So we don't lock you in. But we do allow you to be excellent across multiple different subjects. And if you're a budding master chef, then hospitality studies may be something for you. If you think you have watched so much of the block and you are ready to renovate and buy your first house, young people, you might want to get into IDT. You can do those industrial design workshop kind of classes that you would have to wait normally to get into year nine or year 10 to even experience. You can do that now at Mary <coughs> It is cool. <laughs> um, you can even do media. So if you like making small films, if you like doing artworks, if you want to be a part of the digital uh, world, you can do media for the first time in grade seven. And why shouldn't you? Because school needs to be engaging. It needs to be about what you love. And if it isn't, we lose you. We lose great kids because they fall through the cracks because school isn't for everybody. Why shouldn't it be? It should be. Education is the ticket out of poverty. That is the phrase that I have lived by my entire life and I deeply believe in it. I think every single parent here wants even better than what they got for themselves for their own children. I know I do. I want my child to have the experiences that I never had. I want my child, I wanted my child who's recently graduated to stand in front of other staff members who loved him the way that I did. So that's what I expect my staff to do as well. So to have that experience and be joyful in subjects that they get to be exposed to, then that's, that's how we get to keep them in school. We're not running around stealing cars and mugging people at the train station because they find the value in a community here who has high expectations for them and that they are proud to wear their uniform, so I'm not going to be a part of that. Because I'm committed to what I believe in the culture of my school and the family of my school. <clears throat> so, you can get to do amazing things. Be in our dance program. Do media studies. Cook. You'll notice that our STEAM classrooms look really different. When you did your tour, you would have seen that they look really different. They're deliberately designed for people to be able to move around. Not like a more traditional classroom. Our science uh, labs are designed to be cooperative learning environments. They're not staggered like this. People sitting together, high benches, they can see things. Q1, Cara now teaches in a drama studio. There's no desks and chairs in there because it's about getting up and being a part of the experience. So you can see that there's a lot of different ways that we can cater to our students. Unfortunately, what wasn't open today for you is that if you are the budding visual artist, we also have a gallery here. 
how beautiful for a young person to not just be able to display their artwork on the <coughs> fridge, but also to be able to display it in a professional working gallery. Beautiful white walls, beautiful sculpture. We have a kiln, a nice little kiln here. So students get to have that exposure that they would like in a more professional and serious way. Our workshops are all there. They're still fairly traditional, uh, but the kinds of things that our young people get involved in are really starting to amp up in that world. So we do have what we call an EMP or an enrollment management plan that makes it quite difficult to get into this school. Um, I always say it's easier to get a passport than to get into <coughs> Mary Mac. Um, that's because we have closed the borders. We'd like to keep our students to be within our community. The best school in your community should be the best school in your community. But if you would like to come and be a part of our school, then the way you do that, if you are in Cashmere, is through our summit programs or our excellence programs. <clears throat> we need to make sure, please, that you also have finalised your enrolment with us and have been accepted because we do experience days and you won't be invited to those days if you haven't got your application in and if you haven't been accepted. So that's really important. And lovely Tracy in the beautiful papaya vest jacket down the back there. Officer, and she is your go-to human being. I love to talk to you, but she is your go-to person around this space. Um, okay, so we've talked about what summer programs look like in the academic world, but we have several others um, in four categories. So we say we have the STEAM Academy, for the students who are a bit more digital or technologically minded, very creative, perhaps entrepreneurial, that's your space. Academic, the four KLA key areas is what we're looking for, and you sit an academic test. Sports Summit has multiple fields, and Chris will talk to you about that, as does the arts. <clears throat> academic Summit talks to you, uh, sorry, talks to young people about being creative and pushing them a little bit harder. Sometimes we find our young people who've been exceptional in primary school struggle when they come into the academic classes of high school because the standards are quite high. Don't worry. We always pick up by the end of term one. It's just that short change where maybe they've been a really big fish in the little pond and now they've come in and there's lots of other kinds of people to compete with in that space. The great thing is, is that those kind of minded kids are all together, feeding off each other and learning off each other and challenging each other. And our year seven teachers are hand-picked. They do two subjects each. So they would combine with say a math science class and another teacher for an English history class, and then they would have a couple of teachers for their electives. So it's what we call a gradual release model. We don't throw them out and say, here's nine teachers, good luck. They have their own classroom, they're there for four lessons, they go out for their electives. You get to know their key teachers, which are in their KLAs, and that's for all students, because that's important. Um, we do lots of different competitions. We do market days where students are able to sell their product out to the rest of the school as well, which is really amazing. That's some of the bar forms and things that they've made. We do pop-up shops, um, visits to university, all sorts of amazing things. <clears throat> we have a special centre called The Hive. I'm not sure if that was open today for you to have a look at. If you're unsure about whether or not your student is an academic excellence student or a summit excellence student in academics, there's a couple of things that will give you an idea. Are they getting A's and B's in those four key areas? Do they like to debate? Are they well read? Do they have an interest in current affairs? Or do they ask you questions that you think, oh, that's a bit left field, I'm not sure about that one, I'll have to come back to you. Um, are they deep thinkers? Sometimes they're quite empathic and they can be quite moved by things. Um, you know, sometimes seeing things on the news can be a little bit challenging for our young academic excellence people. So if that's the kind of person that maybe you, your young person is, have a look at the Academic Summit as an opportunity for you. And Dana um, runs that program. She'll be able to give you more information as well. <coughs> Jada Turich is here to tell you a little bit. Now, Jada joined us from primary school land. I scold her. And she's come to us, um, to Mary Mac, to really start to um, bridge some of the gaps and build a really wonderful collegiality that Mr. Ricardo has um, established over many years. And we, we're so big now that we would love to have Jada as a part of that team. And so she stepped in to tell us a little bit about STEAM and our achievements this year. Were you on that trip? 
no, that was the year before me. But I did go down to Sydney last year for our uh, national championship. It was pretty amazing. Uh, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that Merrimack has one of the best uh, robotics and STEAM programs on the Gold Coast. I want to say Queensland too, but Gold Coast for now. Uh, we have every year national champions in the VEX and First Lego uh, robotics competitions. This year we're running the First Lego League uh, nationals here at Merrimack uh, in term four. Uh, we are really trying to build a culture of innovation and critical thinking. Uh, we're really looking for children who are a little bit different in the way they think because the jobs that are in the future haven't really been created yet. So we're trying to find that individuality in them. And when I'm teaching one of my STEAM classes, I always say, this is your chance to show me your difference. I don't want you to be the same here. Uh, how can we build something that's uh, independent of your thoughts? So we're really into innovation here. So we uh, um, traveled to the world champions this year in Dallas, Texas. I didn't get to go, but Mr. Ricardo and uh, I think two of our teams went over to Dallas, Texas. Uh, we also uh, went to Sydney last year for the VEX Robotics Championships. We have run, won the first LEGO League and the Sumo Championships. Uh, we've been in the top five, I think, in Australia the last, I think, five or six years, at least. Uh, and then we've also been to Japan. Uh, and it, basically, we're running a pretty tight ship here, and we're really looking to uh, find some really keen STEAM students who want to join this journey that I feel really privileged to be. Chris, um, I'm, I'm in charge of HPE um, and the industrial kitchens as well, and little people. So anything to do with games and fun is my sort of Lego land, but I'm going to talk about sport here. Um, so I'm aiming to try to offer some different type of sporting experiences to what has traditionally been done here at Merrimack over the last 10 years. Um, and the, the four proposed sports is what you can see on the, on the board. Now I've had a couple conversations with a couple of parents and families already tonight and they're saying, well my son's a soccer player, my son's a, a, a swimmer and my, my daughter um, does X, Y or Z. Um, if your student is sporty and would like to have some type of career or that just increases their engagement with school, is by engaging with sport at school, please continue to apply for our high performance sports programs. Um, we will still welcome all those different students. The reason why I'm targeting these four particular sports is because our kid, oh, how do we go back? Other way, there we go. It's a, everyone's a bit different. Um, our geographical location really lends ourselves to work with some really good community partners. So we've got Royal Beach Cats, AFL and Netball Club, they just share our fence with us. We've got Bond U University, Gold Coast Basketball Association just down the road in Carrara. So for a sport program or any type of specialist program in any school to be sustainable, it doesn't matter if you've got the best teacher, if that teacher goes, it generally folds. And we've seen that um, here as an example in some previous sports over the last sort of 10 years that I've been around as well. So irrespective of what staff I get in and what staff of mine move on to better and bigger things, I wanna make sure that these programs stay. Um, <coughs> That's not saying in the future we can't expand our offerings. We get a lot of people coming through from soccer, say football. Um, I'm not saying that's not going to be on the cards, but it's just not my focus for next year as well. Um, but if you're in any other sport besides those, please still feel free to apply. Um, in saying that, we will have at least one sports summer class next year based on round one applications. I don't have enough um, students in any one individual sport to run a basketball specific program yet. We've still got round two open. I do need a fair few more applications. We'll definitely have at least one general sports summit class which has been running the way it's been going on for the last uh, 10 years or so but the program will be revised next year irrespective if it's a basketball or an AFL or a netball excellence or it's a combined sport um, high performance sports program anyway. Got a couple of um, fantastic new staff who are hitting me up all the time with new ideas. It is time to refresh, and I love doing things a little bit different and keeping myself on, on my toes as well. Um, in saying that, all students in the sports summer program will follow the Australian curriculum, 
So that means they will engage with things like identity, relationships, drug abuse, all those extra things that aren't sport. Because if you pick up a newspaper, what do you usually see sport athletes in the newspaper for? It's not because they missed a set shot, it's because they disengaged with their phone or they got up to a little bit of mischief. So we want to make sure that our sport students are not on the back pages themselves as well. So um, I know some other schools might just go sport, sport, sport. One of my really good friends who works in a totally different region, so I can talk about this. I know he pulls his hair out. He's just come from an engagement background into a, a HPE pod role uh, at the end of last term. And he's saying, none of my rugby guys go inside. They don't do any health lessons at all. All they do is just train. Like four times a week, they don't do anything else. So they get really good results in their rugby results, but they're not following Australian curriculum. They're not learning anything outside of just rugby as well. Um, so I'll promise that, that we will strongly align with Australian curriculum as well. Um, I've got a few things I need to run by the people above me, but uh, if we do have X amount of students in that AFL or netball or rugby um, or basketball space, then I've got a few other ideas of what we can do to value add and specifically target those students um, outside of a general class as well. So it's nice to have those in the back and I can talk to you about that one. That is me. I'm going to hand it over to Cara, but at the end of this session, I'll just be waiting outside. If we've got another session coming up, feel free to ask me any questions you like or send me an email to show you can find my email address somewhere. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, sir. Good luck. Um, good evening everyone, um, thank you for your patience. Um, so I am the Head of the Arts and I'm very privileged to be a part of this amazing community. Um, I've come, I've worked at multiple schools, built <coughs> programs of excellence from the ground up and also maintained and extended them. So I'm really, really fortunate that we have an incredible arts team here and I feel very uh, happy to have landed where I have. So we have three uh, arts summit programs. So we have dance, uh, music and triple threat, which is brand new to us next year. So it's only starting with us next year. So all of our electives are still available to all of our students as well. So if students um, are maybe not at that sort of specific level um, and they don't want to audition for an arts summit program, they are still able to choose any of our arts throughout the year. So I think they've, I've already got kids going, I want to do that again next year, which is super great. It means I've had a fantastic experience and our teachers are loving it. We also have instrumental music, which runs parallel to these programs. So if your student does band or strings at school at the moment, and they would like to continue in their instrumental music program, that is a completely separate program, run very similar to primary school. They have their half an hour instrumental music lesson once a week, come out of a curriculum time. We also alternate that, so they never miss the same chunk of a curriculum period a week. And then they have an ensemble rehearsal that's either before or after school. We have a step that's coming up. We also have amazing opportunities that we're playing at amazing concerts and things like that. And we just went to the Blues on Bull Beach excursion and our kids have these amazing opportunities. So if they are an instrumental music student, please also keep that in mind. So our Triple Threat program, this is a specific course that is targeted for those musical theatre students or those students that are maybe um, excelling in two out of the three arts areas. They just love performing. There is no necessary experience needed. If your student just loves to sing and dance and run around the house and acting out all of their favorite movie scenes, this subject is for them. It's all about them wanting to learn and wanting to improve and working as part of a team. So it also prepares them for the industry because we're going to look at all of those areas. With that program, they're going to uh, work as an ensemble, they get to direct, they get to create, they also get to be directed, they get to do workshops with industry professionals, and they also get to put on performances for our local community, which is really exciting. You all went through our brand new theatre in Q1. It's a very beautiful space. That is literally my classroom that I walk into every day. I did have a few comments about the really strong smell of the, the, the paint or the carpet, so I apologise, but that's how fresh that space is. The kids get to work in that every single day and they just walk in there and they love and respect it. So for them to be able to learn also technical skills, backstage and all that is really amazing. So they will develop their industry awareness. We're also doing a full school musical for the first time next year. So any student who is interested in doing anything musical theatre, this is a really great opportunity. It is only a summit program for year seven. So this is a summit program across year seven where the students will learn everything they need to know. Then it is an elective in year eight and nine. So it's opened up to any student in the school that wants to do it. It's not just specifically for those summit kids. So any kid that wants to do it, wants to have a crack, they are more than welcome. Oh, sorry. That's right. I'll just 
here talking then. Um, we also have dance as a completely separate um, summer program. So again, if a student does dance outside of school, or they've done dance in primary school and they're really interested in doing dance, that is a separate audition. We again have students across um, multiple art summit areas and that is totally fine. We have just done two, we're coming out to our third step of this year, we've been super successful competing against massive schools and we are walking away with places that we are so proud of and our students are really holding their own and representing us really proudly. So there is the Dance Summit program as well and then there is also Music Summit which has only just started this year. So your student doesn't have to play an instrument if they are an avid singer or they can love working with the digital sound technology. We do a lot of that sort of com composition and things like that with the digital devices. But again, all of that information is on our website. It is audition based, so if you are a triple threat or a dance student, it is an audition based in person where you must sort of do a little performance and have a conversation with um, myself or Miss Pike, who is our dance teacher. But any other questions, feel free to ask Mrs. Kadajar. My email is <coughs> all there, but thank you so much. Um, just an interesting fact that we learned as a staff uh, last term was that the um, third highest job employment opportunity for people, young people leaving school on the Gold Coast is actually in the creative arts. So the first is in health, the second is in hospitality, and the third is in this. What an amazing opportunity. We've got the convention centre, the casino, any number of different events that happen across the Gold Coast, and now our young people can stay, learn, study, and continue to develop and grow our community doing things that they love and actually making a job of it. Once upon a time, Kara and I worked together more than 10 years ago, and we used to say, we don't, we're not here to breed the next Kate Blanchett or Russell Crowe, because very few people make a life or a living out of that kind of job. But that's changed. We saw that the very thing that got us through COVID was Netflix, the movies came to us, you know, people were adapting technology, we were talking to people through screens, all of these things come from creative and bright young minds from our STEAM kids, from our triple threat students for bringing us entertainment. <laughs> Since ancient Greece, we have been entertained. This kind of um, <coughs> program for young people is finally starting to pay off for them to, who can make a, a huge living out of this, and that's a, a beautiful privilege. So all of the information that you can find about tonight is here. Step one, go to our beautiful website, find enrolling at our school, and then you'll see the enrollment application. Click on that and all of the information will be there. If you get stuck, you can ring Tracy or email Tracy. If you have registered, did our QR code work again? Yeah. Okay, so sorry about that. <clears throat> it wasn't working earlier. It is working now. I'm not sure if we've got... They haven't done it. I've got some up there. Perfect. <laughs> that would be amazing. So don't forget, we don't know who you are unless you tell us. So if you would like more information, please make sure that you register with the QR code that is now working. I apologise for that earlier today. Um, or if you want to ask some questions, please feel free to stick around. There are some key dates I need to draw your attention to. Enrolment interviews will be taking place on the 28th and 29th of August for our first group of enrolled students. So those are the people who we have accepted from Term 1, who went to the open day, did the academic testing, etc. So there are new dates just for this particular group, so you'll need to be um, registered with us so that we can let you know what that looks like. <coughs> if you enrol after that, it will mean that there will be less opportunities for your students in the electives because they will be full. Or less places available for our summit programs because they will be full. I cannot take 45 students in one class. That doesn't work. So it, it's very tight. If you are considering coming to our school, must do the enrolment very, very soon because we have done it already. This is just a, we've had so many people saying, hey, we'd really like to, we missed out on the first round, or I didn't realise my students, I didn't really know that the times were so tight in high school. I was saying to a parent today of a student in year five and I said, guess what? After week four of your student moving into year six, they will be enrolling for their high school. So if you have siblings in year five now, know that we are coming for you in term four and we expect to see you in term one. It happens that quickly because schools need to hire, we need to build facilities and we need to know who's coming because we tailor our programs for your students. So that's why we need to know that information. So happy to answer any of your questions. We'll be sticking around with the team. Um, 